We both know why you don't have any friends. It's because you haven't done the Big Blue Blob achievement as friends. And today we'll show you how you can do it. In fact, I'll do it before the end of 1470. And afterwards, everybody will want to be my friend because that's how it works. Also, guys, consider subscribing to the channel. I have a goal of reaching 100,000 subs by the end of the year. And in return, I'll do a mega campaign. And like this video if you want to see a part two for the friends run where we do better than Napoleon before 1500. France starts with 20 provinces of its own as well as five separate vassals from 1444. So obviously the first thing that you need to do is grab the nearest baguette next to you and start munching on it. And it's important whilst you're still chewing the baguette that you do the estate. We're obviously going to give the plus one mana for all three estates with the patronage of the arts and we're going to be developing Developing the province of saint Anger once, make sure you encourage development, do production first. After that, we can sell the titles over here. So that means we go to the economy screen, so that recycles the dev cost for provinces. So we can dev this a second time now for even cheaper than the first time. That also means we can seize land afterwards. Our main focus is going to be the English lands at the very start, and we will declare on them immediately. Before we do that, however, get some alliances, some decent alliances include Castile, Savoy, and that's pretty much it. You don't really need any other allies. I recommend you cancel the proclaim guarantee that you have on the Scots from the start. You want to actually attack them after the war with the English, as well as cancel the alliance that you start off with, the Nation of Provence. Assign your starting generals to the starting armies, the three siege one in the north and the other guy in the south. Make sure you move them by the border. We're also going to be hiring the Grand Company, not the Free Company, not today at least. And after we got the Grand Company, we can now also send our ships into the Atlantic coastline. One more important thing to do is get a royal marriage with all of your vassals before the first month even finishes. And rival-wise, go for the English, of course, with the Austrians and the Burgundians. If the Burgundians did not rival you, then go for somebody else and try and get an alliance with them. We're not actually going to be relying on any of the Burgundian lands for this run at all, because this is quite RNG and it doesn't really count count in my opinion. Alright, so we're gonna be attacking these guys now. Set one of the provinces in the north of England as your main target. A rush for that province as well as the forts that they have both in the north and in the south. <laughs> Sorry about that. What I actually was saying is that the English will land their troops in Portugal and start moving them upwards from here towards the border with you, likely attacking the fort in uh, Narbonne or if you're sieging down Labud, they might even attack you in Labud if you haven't taken the fort yet. Or they might just be retarded and land 3,000 units in the province of Labourde. Okay, that can also definitely happen. But as I did say, they eventually siege down uh, Narbonne. Labourde has fallen. That means we actually can start our assault against the Portuguese over here sieging down Narbonne. And our ally just got excommunicado. That's really unfortunate. If I didn't ally these guys, I would have had an easy time killing them off. So I think I'm just going to cancel this alliance. It's time to see who's stronger, the French or the the Portuguese. We are definitely winning this and we're gonna bring our reinforcements. We left our units behind here so they reinforce in time and as such boost our morale. We didn't even need the reinforcements. They just were cowards and ran away. Fair. Und wir haben ein Ota Battle, ja. Obviously the superior French troops will be the winners of this. They tried to snipe some of our troops over here but the reality is that they got sniped themselves. You don't need to siege down all of the English lands to take what you want in this war. You literally just need need to siege the Portuguese lands over here. And remember, if you don't need to fight a battle, don't do it if you still can get whatever you want, because this would be a drain on our manpower right now, and we desperately do need to preserve our manpower for a lot of wars to come. Clearly, we're gonna go for this peace deal that includes the Pale, so we have access to the Irish lands, and it is more than enough. Actually, we can take a little bit of cash as well. 34 ducats. I like it. 34 ducats is better than no ducats, right? This also means that our crownlands are shooting from 5 to 10% in just 3 years. And we can do 2 missions. The Reconquest of Normandy that offers us another 3% crownlands. And the Reconquest of Gascony together with the 100 Years War. Since uh, we basically finished the 100 Years War. And we are triumphant. For the next phase we'll be getting some claims on the Irish land. Whilst at the same time we'll start getting claims and attacking the nation of Scotland. With which we have a truce until 49. Obviously EU4 is a game of massive 
of RNGness, and because of that, we have about seven different ways of approaching our current situation after the initial English war. We're definitely going to be going into the Irish and Scottish land, as I mentioned, but until we get those claims, we have a lot of time to spare. So we have two options. We can either attack the Bretonians, call in the Aragonese, because apparently they're allied to each other, or we can just no CB against the Byzantines and expand in the Balkans. The Balkans would be the easy way, but I don't like the easy way, so let's go ahead and attack the Aragonese together with the Bretonians, shall we? Cobaligerato, and let's even call in the Castilians and the Papal States. Nobody cares, because we're not going to give them schnapps anyway. Remember that if you have allies in a war, you can always assign objectives to your allies. Make sure that they siege down whatever you want them to siege down. This way you can focus on the important stuff, like letting your allies siege down stuff for you. I apologize, Brittany, but I cannot let you leave out of the Bretonian lands. Because of our starting absolute chad of a sieging general, these forts are falling like butter. Meanwhile, the Castilian armies are getting stack wiped left and right. They've actually lost 30,000 troops already. Hey, look at this. The Pope actually did something great. We can peace out Siena. We're actually going to give them to the Pope. This is one less nation to go in a potential coalition against us. And before we even finish the Bretonian War, we're going to start with our conquests of Ireland here. Cobalajado Folly. England would have been nice if they joined. That would have meant we could reset the truce we have with them. But apparently they're in a pretty nasty war against the Scots. Oh, look at that. We're actually ahead of tech here. Not only massive chads, but smart chads also. Yeah, also these guys have obviously gotten Stack and Vipen because they fought against the greatest army in the world. And I think it's time for a third war, this time against Ulster and their allies. Let there be war! A brave coalition was formed of all the loose Irish women against the French lords. Boy, what a struggle it was to Stack and Vipen them all. It's actually really important whenever you're sieging down the Irish lands that you have at least one unit to prevent them from recruiting more soldiers whilst your main armies are actually busy sieging down the rest of the provinces. Ah, uh, brave Castilians taking care of my Neapolitan issues. I love it. I love Castile. They're like my favorite country right now and I also have 13 innovativeness because I got all the mana points of the world. I think it is time that we peace out the Aragonese. Our allies pretty much did all the work, sieged most of the forts down. We did contribute, so we're taking all the lands for ourselves. Let's see how much money we can take, apparently. This is enough money. And look at this. We have all the Mediterranean islands here that do count as a part of the European continent. And it also means we can start getting claims on these bad boys that also have lands that we are interested in. Of course, you want to concentrate in every single land that you take, so you make it cheaper to court these lands up. So apparently there's a couple more Irish nations around here and they're all allied actually to uh, the Scots except for Tyconnell over here. So we're gonna have to have a separate war for them. But I am attacking the Scots and I am gonna take out all of the Irish miners in the process. Wait a second. I thought it was the English who attacked the Scots but it's the Scottish conquest of Cumbria. My respect just went up the roof of the Scots. I might even try out Haggis. No, I, I was kidding. I was please, please take it away from me. I think we will also waited for long enough in uh, this uh, Bretonian war. I'm going to piece them out. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit extra aggressive expansion, but most of that is actually directed towards the Irish miners, most of which are already long gone, as well as my rivals and nations I already have a truce with. So realistically speaking, it's not really that much of a coalition. For as much of this as we can, we also can get subjugate Brittany that gives us some more diplo power, and we can delete this ugly fort here as well. We need a lot more manpower, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to recruit two generals so I can slack in recruitment afterwards. As guess what, guys? Provence got excommunicado again. So this is basically a free provinces for me. We're pretty much done with these sieges in Scotland, but I'm not going to piece them out for a while because I have a lot of overextension. So <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit to finish coring all of this stuff at least. So in the meanwhile, we're going to be taking care of Provence here. Let's attack him actually right now. Pretty sure the uh, Scottish army sieging 
down London is going, you get some haggis, you get some haggis, everybody get some haggis. I don't know why they're Jamaicans though. Oh lord Jesus, we gotta hold up. What? We made it, we made it. Our reinforcements arrive in time and that means we're probably gonna kick these boys' butts over here. Also, Anju seems to have finished sieging. Noise! And you're gonna get stacked. Oh, would you look at that? My little minions were busy sieging down the allies of Provence. We waited for a few years because of aggressive expansion reasons and now we can actually peace out both of these wars. We're gonna take everything that the nation of Provence has because it's very little aggressive expansion considering that they were excommunicado. That means we can also do the conquest of Provence mission that gives us claims on uh, the Burgundian lands, although we're not really gonna be attacking Burgundy, at least not right now. And we'll be piecing out the Scots as well. We have a slightly larger coalition here, but we don't really care about this coalition either because we expect it to trigger and we will crush them once it does trigger. We do want to be at peace, however, that is really important for us as we need to actually start integrating our vassals. And we'll start with the integration of uh, Armagnac as well as the nation of Orléans. And we also can give out the special privilege nobility integration policy that also means we don't get the minus three diplo rep from integrating them once we do integrate them. We can also seize crownlands and afterwards we can sell titles to get some extra cash. Giving out this privilege means that these guys are going to get a little bit of liberty desire but it shouldn't be over 50% even with that privilege. We've also gotten the papal legate that makes it integrating vassals 10% cheaper so now we're actually integrating them by 63 May. So until that happens we're going to be attacking the Venetians. Here's actually a very important E4 lesson not just for you France games but in general. The amount of forts that you have dictate the amount of war score that someone can get on you. For example because my vassals took over this fort I got 85% war score against the Neapolitans because it is their only fort and Naples is essentially out. We have used up all of our professionalism but we are pretty far ahead with our military tech so I'm gonna do a nine head move here and I'm gonna recruit five generals so I can slacken professionalism one more time and after that I'm gonna recruit the free company over here and we can start the war against the English. Portugal would obviously join but we managed to get the uh, Castilians on our side so uh, Castile can take care of Portugal for us. Oh Naples got excommunicado. I have a truce with them otherwise this would have been a easy kill against the Neapolitan. Also guys take a look at this we have 4.7 morale of armies. The second closest to us is Burgundy with 3.9. Okay the AI is really freaking brave. They just attacked me in this fort thinking that they can win that battle even though their armies have like what? I literally stack wiped the entire English army. They have no troops left man bruh wow that's insane the ai actually attacked me new ai is very very brave but dumb how do they think they're gonna win that i don't get it all right we integrated armoniac as well that means we just gotta wait for the other guys to get integrated and it also means that we need to be at peace as soon as possible because we gotta start the integration of these other boys meanwhile this fort is really annoying because it hasn't fallen a very very long time and because we haven't taken the northern fort here we cannot just raffle stomp into the English land and they are recruiting another army sadly. The Portuguese seem to be out of this and you know what I actually might just piece them out and Daria go now we can just wipe out everything that is in the English Isles. They only have 13,000 fresh units and we found out where those units are trying to intercept them. My boys that's not gonna cut it sir I apologize but your 3.1 pathetic morale of an army is gonna get stuck and wiped once more. Oh god this is just historical gameplay right here guys this fort finally fell as well and uh, we're basically just carpet sieging the english lands now this is what i like to call an italian a double sandwich essentially it is me killing off the venetian troops with a classic stack and Vipen on a hill fort and we can also get our first idea set there are some ideas that would help us with expanding faster of course admin ideas help us with the core creation reduction diplomatic ideas help us with getting more lands and with Diplo reputation and getting our diplomats out there so we can actually lower the impact of aggressive expansion if we were to care about that or influence has it so that we integrate our vassals faster. I honestly don't give a schnitzel about any of these and I'm gonna go for quantity ideas because I want a big coalition to make this a proper challenge. Also because of what they did in the 1.32 origins patch it's actually a lot cheaper coring up lands since they lowered the war score costs considerably by I think 10 to 15 percent for 
each province. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast to present you with some really disturbing news. Apparently, aggressive expansion does not matter when you're playing as France, and incredibly, the French are actually annexing half of the English lands, not giving a single schnitzel about the world joining in a coalition against them. And due to the lowered war score costs, we are actually able to core everything up quite easily. With one exception, from the province of Cumbria, we will be releasing Northumberland for the next war against the English. And boy will the manpower bonuses from quantity come in handy, because look at the next peace deal here, we're taking the entire Balkan coastline of the Venetians, thus getting a few nations in a massive coalition against us. Of course, we'll be deleting all of these useless forts in this area, we don't want to give free war score to the future coalition, do we? And actually, we have all the provinces that we need. We have 96 provinces, and we just need to integrate these three vassals here. And that's exactly what we need for the big blue blob in 1464. We are a little bit over the force limit, but we'll fix that soon. And uh, we're going to start integrating people now. And to fight off the coalition, we're going to need some strong allies. I think I'm going to go for the Muscovites for this uh, alliance and for the Poles, because I can apparently ally both of these nations. Oh, this is going to be interesting this is gonna be very interesting oh hello there mr. radical reforms that gives us 200 admin and diplo here's what you do if you get this event you obviously fire both of these guys and then rehire them afterwards oh no our Chad leader die what one for one I'm gonna go ahead and say no thank you for that anything is better than that guy I have done some things very different in this run than my standard games for once I actually increased autonomy in some provinces like I've increased autonomy here for example I've also increased autonomy in Sardinia a lot of these newly taken lands here as well and there's a good reason for that I increased the autonomy basically so I prevent too many rebels from spawning and I also did not actually make full cores most of the newly added lands so unless it was in the French region and I had cores from before I didn't waste extra admin points to make these full cores obviously this had an impact on my economy and my army because my max land force limit is 40 six it would be close to a hundred if I was to actually make all of these cores but I did wanted to see how fast I can expand and get all the provinces that I need before I actually start making stuff cores one more thing to take note of is the fact that I can even ally the Ottomans Lithuania Novgorod and so many other nations it's actually quite powerful I'm not gonna lie the amount of allies that you can get as the French simply because of the fact that you're a strong nation yourself and because of the diplo reputation that we have Ooh, rumor Rumors are spreading that Aragon's gonna start the coalition war against us, boys. You know what, I think in that case we should sell some titles and get a little bit of money before the war starts. And of course, position our troops by the border with Aragon. Oh, schnapps! Oh, schnapps, Milan declared the coalition. I thought it was gonna be Aragon, man. All right, well, let's see what it looks like, guys. It looks disgusting. But we do have every single one of our allies act still in this freaking coalition, so it should be extremely easy to deal with them. Let's obviously focus on the Aragonese here because we're we're at the border with them. And afterwards, let's also start marching over to the Milanese land. Okay, that was a stacking Viper. And we integrated a couple of our vassals. One more to go. Hey, there goes all of our cores. We're gonna improve with outraged nations right now, guys. This is the moment to fix our situation. Seriously, Charles. Seriously, two, three, two, man. Actually, I'm gonna change my plan. I'm I'm not gonna siege down Saluto or Milan. I'm just gonna make sure that I have all my troops in the south here merged and I'm gonna fight them back. To be fair though, coalition wars you win by winning the battles, not by sieging down anything, so it's fine. Let's see if we can uh, snipe these troops over in uh, Lyonne. Well, we should be able to kill them off, I think, before any reinforcements arrive. Yep, that was a Stacken Weipen. What? A second coalition war? Bruh. And Poland did not join me or the Papal States in the second war. So now we're at war with a lot more nations including Savoy. Small battles is where it's at, guys. The more small battles we win, the faster we win these coalition wars. I like how they keep coming in here. Nice. Okay, we won most of the battles here. In fact, we have pretty much a buttload of war score from battles alone, and we got the ticking war score here as well on our side. But I am actually going to piece out the Milanese because I don't really want to be in this war for much longer. So we cannot really white piece them, but I can offer him my allies' land. 
plans, I'm gonna ask that the Pope releases Perugia and Spoleto because the Pope did not join my second coalition war, so they can suck BP, man. And now we gotta deal with the second coalition war, which we haven't really fought many battles against, but which is actually very easy. It's just like five, six countries. I can deal with this by myself. We do have considerably high war exhaustion, so I'm gonna use my uh, Diplo points to lower that. These guys have so many scattered armies, it's actually insanely easy. I like how my allies are sieging down the war leader's capital in the meanwhile. Yeah, we got 43% already and we occupied most of the coalition members. What can we take? 6% I can give Genoa to Crimea. What? Why? I don't want to give Genoa to Crimea. I will take 9 ducats from you, sir. 9 ducats signifying that we won this coalition war. Oh, come on, Castile. I cannot have a second of peace, really. The main reason I wanted to peace out the coalition fast was because I was at 99% progress with the province of Zadar and I had to peace out to get all of my provinces cored which means we have a hundred provinces as our main cores in the European continent and as such we got the blue blob achievement by 1470. Obviously I already have that achievement but I am thinking to go for better than Napoleon own Vienna, Berlin and Moscow as cores before 1500. Now I'll be honest guys that's not gonna be easy. In fact, it took me almost four real life days to finish these 20 something years of in-game France because I really had to plan every single one of my moves perfectly to get this achievement so fast. So if you want to see the better than Napoleon second part for this France, then leave a like, 10,000 likes, and I know it's a lot of likes, but it will be worth it. Trust me, I'm Romanian. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.